Let's just try this one. Not quite right here. Um, just going to tweak this. Don't think I need this part. There we go. So what have we done here? Quite a complicated uh, coding idea here. Uh, so we're referencing a range. You can see there's a normal, uh, certainly the beginning of a normal uh, range. And we're referencing more than one cell. So we're beginning in cell D6. And then this is the interesting part here because the second part of the reference is taken from the cell, taken from the cell in the spreadsheet, and I've used an and sign to connect those two components together, to connect the usual cell reference with a reference to a cell in the spreadsheet, specifically cell B2. So let's have a look what's in cell B2. And in cell B2, we can see there's a formula telling us how many students uh, are in the class. So let's just give this a go. I know it's not quite right yet, but let's just let's just see see what happens. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so we can see this this line of code, the line of code we just created, um, has populated cells D six to D thirteen with this not here text. So that's almost there but not quite right. Why has it only gone to D13? Well, we're saying um, this range here, so D6 to the value in B2, and the value in B2, D6 to the value in B2, and the value in B2 is 13. So if you can understand how the spreadsheet formula and VBA are interacting, you can unlock these really uh, powerful referencing techniques. Uh, so we need to... Um, Put an, put an increment on here if you like, uh, put a number on here. So let's say plus five, and let's give this a go. Okay, we can see now we've adjusted the reference and the not here text is going down um, as far as we want it to go. Uh, so let's prove this, let's um, delete, let's go back down to nine students and let's delete the buttons. So I'm gonna hit the run the delete buttons code. There we go. So we should have no, well, just a single button in the spreadsheet. There it is at the top. Then let's run the um, copy paste buttons code. There we go. We can see we've got the right number of buttons there. And then finally, let's run the reset code, reset class, run the code there. So we should have, and now we've got the right amount of not here's. So now uh, the spreadsheet is ready uh, for a teacher to use. But we wouldn't want to have to go into the VBA editor to run that reset class code. So how could we make it easier to run? Well, we could put a button in the spreadsheet. Um, I'm gonna go to developer, insert button. Then as always, using the alt key. And I want the reset class uh, macro to run that. Let's just edit the text here make it meaningful. Let's call it reset. Okay, there we go. So now I can hit the reset button, it resets. So now I can check, check some students in and you can see if I make a mistake, it's very easy, just hit the button again and the student disappears. So let's say there's some students in, we can see our analysis at the top is updating here. So nine total students in the class, nine, that's right. Five are present, that's right four are not present, so we've got some really nice analysis uh, working at the top. And let's say the class has finished, we want to reset, very easy to reset it, and then uh, we're ready to go again. Just finally, before we wrap this up, let's just, let's just format this sheet um, so it's a little bit sharper. Uh, uh, the Calibri font is our default font uh, in Excel. And you know, Calibri is okay, it's always a personal choice font, but it does take up quite a lot of room Calibri. And for me, it's not the sharpest, most professional looking uh, font. Um, I like a font, uh, you know, Arial, Arial is fine. Um, I like a font called Franklin Gothic. For me, it's a little, little bit sharper. And I think we can reduce the font size here a little bit. Okay, and that for me is beginning to look better. And let's do the same up here. So I'm gonna copy paste the formatting, uh, control C, control alt V T to copy paste uh, the formatting. And of course, it hasn't quite worked because um, this is of course date formatting. So it's tried to convert the numbers to dates. 
so that wasn't wasn't the best idea unfortunately unfortunately let's take the formatting from this cell control c control v control v and t and that uh, paste the for paste the formats in um, and let's extend the formatting across uh, the table here so alt h o e opens the formatting dialog box border uh, let's just put a simple black border in here. But that's going to enable us to switch the grid lines off, uh, which is helpful. Let's make these numbers bold. There we go. So now I can switch the grid lines off, which gives us this nice uh, kind of clean look. And I'm not by any stretch of the imagination saying this is perfectly presented and formatted, but we have kind of realised some good... Um, presentation principles there. Um, everything's neatly lined up. Um, there's consistent uh, use, a consistent font across the whole sheet. There's some nice conditional formatting. Uh, and there's, there's a button here, the size of which I'm just going to reduce to make it fit in. And there's a nice reset button there uh, that we can hit. Um, arrival time, forgot to change the formatting there. So let's go back to Franklin Gothic and uh, nine. There we go. Okay, so something like that. That's certainly well on the way to, to having a really nice uh, professional look. Okay, so that's the end uh, of the video series. So we were looking at how can we use Excel VBA for super fast data input. So right in the first video in the series when I was in the car, we were talking about different data input options. Obviously, we can very simply just hide data in or use a drop-down menu. But if you're in a press pressure situation, say you're a teacher with students coming into a class, you might be monitoring attendance at a meeting, you might be at some kind of event, you know, you don't want to be typing things in. So we looked at better options for data input and identified this technique of using buttons to do data input where we can just click, one mouse click, and the data input is done. So that was the aim of this video series. And we've looked at uh, how to do that. We looked at creating uh, multiple buttons, we looked at positioning uh, buttons, we looked at creating that really nice dynamic routine that triggers from all the buttons uh, but changes the correct cell according to the position of the button, we looked at conditional formatting, uh, we looked at putting in that arrival time, then finally we looked at creating that reset button which means we don't have to worry about clicking around uh, to reset it, and then just some presentational ideas, very basic presentational ideas at the end uh, to get it looking uh, decent. So that's the end of the video series. You know, I hope you can try this in your work. Maybe you're a teacher and you want to try it. Certainly let us know uh, how you get on, but certainly uh, in a more general sense, uh, this is a great example of some, some formulae spreadsheet techniques, combine them together with Visual Basic to get loads done. And I hope in a more general sense, it helps you with your Excel learning. I'll see you in another video on the channel.